stopped at this one spot. It was actually looking amazing. The sun was out and it just looked perfectly flat. Does everything I want it to do. Light turning, quick through the loops, quick through the sky. It's pretty powerful. Yeah, I reckon it's the most powerful. Back four years ago, and had exactly the same condition. I was out on my seven. It was pretty windy. Like it was good for like mega loops and it's pretty crazy. Like to pull off, I was already in the lip, and there was nothing else really I could be doing. Eight foot, that wave I got, the, the big one. Um, I didn't, I didn't think it was that big, you know what I mean? But I was, can't really look at it just because I was concentrated on uh, keeping my nose from nose diving, which didn't work. When it hit me, it was, it's very hard to describe how intense it was, but it was it was almost like a giant just picked me up in two fingers and just shook me for about 15 seconds. Falling at the peak of Jaws is by far the worst place to fall in that whole lineup. One big shark. The shark was swimming straight towards me, and it would have been very interesting if I'd fallen in the water. In other places around the world where white sharks come close to shore, they face tremendous pressures such as fishing, pollution, and fast moving boats. Yet here we have an incredible example, one of the last remaining examples of where they can come in and do their thing naturally without us interfering in their world. So, if great whites come inshore for their own reasons that have nothing to do with humans, what could those reasons be?